Wow, my face in a video? This is so epic, boys. <laughs> I, you know, I always try new stuff here. You know, small channel, gotta try to grow, gotta try new things. Anyways, what is today's video? Well, if you read the title, which, why well, wouldn't you read the title? Doesn't matter. If you read the title, you would know that this video is about feeding my fish. And, um, yeah, so what we're gonna be doing today is, of course, feeding my fish. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of what I feed my fish. Now, generally speaking, it's sort of an accepted thing that you want to have some sort of variety in your fish's diet. And I do believe that's important, so let's just go over the kind of things you should feed your fish, I guess. Okay, now let's start off what I'm going to call like your mid-swimmers or like your top swimmers. Basically what I mean is just fish that aren't bottom feeders. So in my case, that's mosquito fish, sword tails, gourami, abeta. Uh, rosy red minnows, um, black neons and neon tetras. So basically just anything in that category that's kind of small fish that swim around, what do you want to feed those guys? Well, there's sort of three things you want to feed. Them. Well, there's more, but I'll show you what I do. Now, I have these two right here. This is um, your uh, tropical fish formula bug bites, and I also have the cichlid formula. Now, this is the one I had originally, and I fed this to most of my Tetras for at least a year. This is pretty much the only thing they got to eat, and they're doing fine, so this definitely works. But, you know, I think it's a good idea to have the option. So I, I would honestly recommend just get multiple, there's different ones as well. I think there's like a color enhancing one, I don't know how that works, but I'd say get a few sort of varieties of just your normal flake food. And then you can also use stuff like frozen food. Now I use bloodworms and we're probably gonna use that in this video so we can feed the carnivorous plants too. But yeah, um, bloodworms are a great one too. And your bottom feeders can also, like Cory's will love the bloodworms as well. And I think I've seen shrimp eat them too. Uh, also frozen brine shrimp are also really good. And of course there is the option of live food. Now I've never done live food yet. I had Daphnia uh, starting in that, there's up here, there's like a plant cup. I had Daphnia in there for a while, but then the cup mostly evaporated but I have them in my bowl and I'm thinking I'm debating if I should try to culture them because you know they are they are technically like they came from floating plants so they are they're probably like wild to an extent but at the same time that bowl is so healthy that I don't think it's gonna have any diseases so that's kind of your main sort of food sources here frozen brine shrimp frozen blood worms your kind of normal flake food and stuff that's what I like to feed my fish now how often should you have variety that's sort of a debatable thing. I pretty much feed this every day, or sorry, I feed every other day. Let's, let's talk about that first, actually. So I feed my fish pretty much every other day. Occasionally, I'll give them a longer break. For example, um, I didn't feed these guys for about, I think it was three days. Fish can go quite a long time without eating. And I kind of just did this to see how long, you know, we could go without feeding, because these guys are getting really fat, kind of, so I wanted to kind of give them a little bit of a break. And everyone's doing well, so, they can definitely go a while and they won't get all nippy and stuff like they're not going to attack your other fish but obviously if you didn't feed these if i didn't feed these guys for a long time they would definitely eat my cherry shrimp i can tell you that so i'd say i tend to go every other day it doesn't really matter and it also doesn't really matter when you add the variety as long as you do it like i'll feed sometimes i'll feed blood worms once a week sometimes twice a week sometimes i think i've done it three times a week once and sometimes i just won't do it at all in one week it really it really doesn't matter, just, you know, add a bit of variety sometimes and you're good to go. Here's a different backdrop just to keep things interesting. Now, um, beta, same as tetras and all that stuff. Everything I just talked about, I feed to these guys. But what about your bottom feeders? You can see there is Weirdo. Oh no, you can't see him because of the lighting. There he is. Um, can we spot a few more Cory's for this clip or no? Cory's love to hide in here. But, um, Bottom feeders. Now, what do I mean by bottom feeders? Now, traditionally, that's kind of just like your Corydoras, catfish, and your, uh, like, a Placostomus, but that's more of like an algae eater kind of thing. So pretty much what we're, I'm just talking about here is like sort of cleanup crew scavenger sort of thing. So Corydoras, catfish, um, like mystery snails or any kind of snails, um, uh, Placostomus, and uh, cherry shrimp. So what do I feed those guys? Now, there's a few things you can do with these guys. Obviously, and now, now I just realized why I was starting in the other room because there's Cash taking a nap um, because I was showing the food. Uh, now with these guys, I kind of do an alternating thing. I mostly feed algae wafers, good for the pleco, good for the snails. And you know, the quarries always, sometimes get the blood worms so they don't just get a diet of this. Now you also have your bottom feeder pellets, but 
Uh, the only flaw with these is pretty much any fish that isn't like a neon tetra can easily fit this in its mouth. I will demonstrate. Let's see if they do it. If I just drop that in there, someone's gonna get it. No? All right, well that was a bit of a fail, but uh, I won't give up hope here. But yeah, so I'd say if you're gonna use these, I'd say chuck in, like you would chuck in two of these, but I'd still add like an algae wafer or something sizable, unless you like, unless you like have fed your quarries really recently, but like you don't wanna accidentally starve your quarries. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of quarry death just comes from the fact that they don't eat. I think that's what happened to my original quarry, Eddie, is he just did not get enough food. Okay, look at that, see? Who has it now? Now it's in, now it's stuck in the water lettuce. But the point still stands. The quarries aren't going to get to this. It's going to be all these guys fighting over it. So that's my point, is that don't just feed that. Now, algae wafers, you know, bottom feeder pellets. What else can I use? Now, there's tons of bottom feeder pellets, but another thing, and, you know, bloodworms and stuff. But another thing you can do that's great for especially snails and shrimp, shr shrimp, shrimp, is actually vegetables. Um... Now, in the past, I have fed cucumbers to my tanks, as well as zucchini. Um, from my experience, quarries don't tend to eat this stuff. I've seen quarries eat the cucumber a bit and the zucchini a bit, but not too enthusiastically compared to the other food. Um, uh, the mystery snails love cucumber. Th these guys love cucumber, and I don't think I've ever given them zucchini. That's next on my list. I'm sure they'd eat carrot as well. I'll put a list on screen from like a website of stuff you can feed snails. Uh, shrimp, they'll they'll eat it. They'll quite like it. So that's all sort of stuff you can do, and um, you can prepare those through a pl pro process through a process called blanching. And pretty much what you do then is you literally just take the cucumber, you boil, you you do it, you basically just boil it and then chuck it in some cold water. It makes it nice and soft and makes it sink. So then it's better for like feeding because it sinks right away. Um, that's the thing I do like on a. I do it like I do it like at least like every two weeks. That, that, that that's how we're gonna say it. Um, it's not a too often thing. I mean, you could easily do a bunch and freeze it, but I don't know. I think everything does pretty well the way I've been doing it. And now let's get into the interesting part where we're actually gonna feed these guys. So we're gonna be feeding uh, this tank, the ten gallon. We're gonna be feeding the nine gallon. We're gonna be feeding the twenty gallon, and we're also gonna go outside to the pond. So uh, let's just get started with that. <laughs> 